All right, the first quadratic function we are going to look at is f of x equals negative x squared minus 6x. So this is the layout that I have for these types of problems. Um, I've been known to give a test problem like this with the exact same layout as it is on this page, okay? So our goal is to graph this parabola by hand. And in order to do that, we're going to find the vertex, the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and the axis of symmetry. And then we're gonna put all of those components together once we have them into the graph, and then that will give us our parabola. And then once we have the parabola, we're gonna write down the attributes of the graph, such as the domain, the range, where it's increasing, where it's decreasing. And then part C of this problem um, involves an inequality. You can see that less than or equal to symbol there. This is my way of incorporating 4.5. Um, after this section, this is section 4.3, we are going to jump to section 4.5 and cover that before we cover section 4.4. Section 4.5 is quadratic inequality, so you're still involving a quadratic function, um, but now it's going to have a less than or equal to, a greater than or equal to, or a less than or a greater than symbol involved. And I feel like these two sections, 4.3 and 4.5, are very much tied together, so I'm adding part C to these problems. Um, this is, again, something out of 4.5, just to kind of get you a jump start on section 4.5 so that when we get there, um, you'll probably pick it up very quickly, okay? All right, so let's go back and take a look at this one. We're gonna graph it. Okay, so we're just gonna go through all the steps, okay? And again, this is how it will be laid out more than likely on your test, okay? Um, again, you should notice that this is a quadratic function, okay? The highest power of x is two. Um, so what you should notice is that the a value is the number in front of x squared, it's negative one. The b value is negative six, that's the number in front of x, and there is no constant value, so we're gonna say that c is zero, okay? All right, um, also, a is a negative value, and so that means this is gonna be a parabola that opens downward, okay? So when you draw your picture, it had better look something like this or you're doing something wrong, okay? All right, so let's start by finding the vertex of this parabola, okay? So vertex, Remember, it is going to be an ordered pair, okay? So it's gonna be, it's gonna have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. To get the x-coordinate, you need to apply the formula. x equals negative b over 2a, okay? So let's plug in our a and our b. Be careful here um, with your signs. This negative is part of the formula, and then b is negative six, okay? And in the denominator, we're gonna have two times negative one, Okay, so this is going to be uh, negative times negative is positive, so 6 over negative 2. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be negative 3. Okay, and then if you want the y-coordinate, remember you have to take this x value and plug it back into the original function. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're going to get y equals, um, let's see, negative be careful here, that negative lives out front. It is not squared, okay? And then x is negative three, that's squared, minus six times negative three, okay? And if we simplify, okay, this negative is outside the parentheses, so it just hangs out, and then negative three squared, well, I'll just go ahead and write it out. That's gonna be this, okay? So this is gonna be, Negative times negative is positive, times negative is negative. This is gonna be negative nine plus 18, so that's gonna be positive nine, okay? That is your y-coordinate, okay? So the vertex is at negative three, nine, okay? All right, now, on to the x-intercepts. That's the next thing you need, okay? Um, remember, for a parabola, you need more than one point, you, or sorry, you need more than you actually need three points for a parabola, okay? So the extra points that we're gonna get are gonna come from the intercepts, both the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts, okay? 
So to find an x-intercept, remember you need to set y equal to zero, okay? And remember, f of x is your y, okay? So we're gonna end up getting zero equals negative x squared minus six x, okay? So you need to solve this for x to get your x-intercepts, okay? This is a quadratic equation. You have an equal sign, the highest power of x is two. So remember, you have two options for solving a quadratic equation, either factor or use the quadratic formula, okay? Um, quadratic formula, some people don't like it because you have to memorize it, and it's, you know, some people forget it easily, um, but it always works. Not everything factors, um, and so then you would be forced to use the quadratic formula. So my point is you can't get away without knowing the quadratic formula. You have to know it. If you like factoring, then use that method. If you like the quadratic formula, use that method, but be prepared. You may encounter a problem that you absolutely can't factor, and then you're going to have to use the quadratic formula, okay? By the way, the quadratic formula is on the last page of the notes in this section, okay, in case you, you forget it. Okay. All right. So let's solve this one. This one is not bad to factor. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Remember, regardless of whether you're factoring or using the quadratic formula, one side has to be zero before you do anything. Okay. And we have that here. One side is zero. Okay. So I'm going to try to factor the non-zero side. You always want to start factoring by taking out what's in common to both pieces. Okay. So what's common here and here. All right. I am going to take out a negative x. Okay, and then I'm going to write in parentheses what is left. Okay, that is going to leave me with x plus 6. Watch your signs. Okay, the great thing about factoring is you can check yourself. If you multiply it back out, you should get what you started with. So if we check ourselves and we distribute back out, we're going to get negative x squared. Negative times positive is negative 6x. Okay, so this is correct. All right, once you have factored it, what you need to do is take each factor, factors are the things that you're multiplying together. So I have one factor here and then a second factor here. You need to take each factor, set it equal to zero and solve. So we're gonna get negative x is equal to zero and then x plus six is equal to zero, okay? And we wanna solve both of these for x, okay? So for here, I just need to divide by negative one, okay? So I'm gonna get x equals zero, okay? That's one x-intercept, okay? And then over here, move the six over. So I'm gonna get x equals negative six. There's the other x-intercepts. So you end up with two x-intercepts here, okay? You can leave them like this or you can write them as ordered pairs. So as ordered pairs, okay, this is gonna be the point x equals zero, y equals zero, so the origin. And then the other one is x equals negative six, and then the y value is zero, okay? So here are your x-intercepts. Okay, so those will be two points on your parabola. Okay, all right, now we're gonna go get the y-intercept. All right, so for the y-intercept, if you remember to get that, you need to set x equal to zero. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our original equation and we're gonna set x equal to zero. It's usually much easier to get the y-intercept as opposed to the, the x-intercepts. All right, so we're gonna get y equals negative zero squared minus six times zero, that's gonna give us zero. And so we end up with an, a y-intercept at the origin. Again, it's x equals zero, y equals zero, okay? So the origin is both an x-intercept and a y-intercept, okay? All right, so we've got enough points. We've got our x-intercept, our y-intercept, and we've got the vertex. We're gonna go ahead um, and jump to the graph, okay? After we have the graph, I'm gonna come back and write down the axis of symmetry, okay? All right, so let's look at our graph. We're gonna plot the points that we have, and we also know that the parabola opens downward, okay? The vertex is gonna be negative three, negative nine. Oops, sorry, I meant negative three, positive nine. I put it in the wrong spot. Should be right there. Okay, so let me erase this. All right, and then I'm going to plot my two x-intercepts. So I've got negative six, zero, and then the origin is both an x-intercept and a y-intercept, so those are my points, okay? And I know the parabola opens downward, and, and 
the points seem to be doing that, okay? So I'm just going to connect the dots with a para para ah, parabolic shape. Remember, since this parabola opens downward, the vertex has to be the highest point on the graph. So I cannot go higher than this, okay? And then we're going to come back down and go through the origin. And you need to use arrows because the parabola keeps going down forever, okay? So that is my parabola. That's the graph, okay? All right. I am going to go back and fill in the axis of symmetry, okay? You need to be able to write down what the axis of symmetry is. There is no work required, okay? So remember what the axis of symmetry is. It is a vertical line that goes through the vertex, okay? So I'm going to draw it in. You don't need to draw it in as part of your graph. You don't have to do that. I'm just illustrating it for you. Okay, I'm going to put this dotted line because it's not really part of the graph. Okay, but it is a vertical line through the vertex. Okay, and your parabola is going to be symmetric about this line. Okay, Let's see if it comes back into focus real quick. Hello. All right, so again, your parabola is symmetric about this line. If you took this sheet of paper and you folded it along the pink vertical line, the left side of the parabola would lie on top of the right side, okay? So that's your axis of symmetry. You need to write down the equation. It is a vertical line, and it always will be a vertical line for these parabolas. And so the equation of a vertical line, if you think back to the sectional line, section 2.2, the equation of a vertical line is always x equals, okay? And it's going to be x equals the x-coordinate of the vertex, okay? So remember, this vertex is negative 3, 9. Every point on this pink line has an x-coordinate of negative 3, okay? So the equation of the line is x equals negative 3. No work required. You just need to write it down, okay? Now, if you just wrote down negative 3 as your answer, that is not correct. I need to see an equation. So you have to put that x equals on there, okay? Now that we have our graph, we're going to go ahead and write down the attributes, okay? So in part B, um, we already did the graph, and then we just need to basically fill in this stuff, okay? All right, domain, okay? Remember, look at your leftmost point, okay? The leftmost point, remember, the graph's going down, 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 down. It corresponds to these y values, or sorry, these x values, okay? So your leftmost point is going to be negative infinity, okay? And then if you go to your rightmost point, your rightmost point is going to be over here. That corresponds to these x values, which is going to be positive infinity, okay? So the graph covers the entire x-axis, okay? So the domain is all real numbers. Um, now that you're at this point in algebra, things start clicking, things are building. Remember, you could have also looked at the equation, this is a polynomial. There are, there's no square roots. There's no fractions, okay? So nothing's going to get you in trouble. The domain's going to be all real numbers, okay? The domain of a quadratic equation or quadratic function is always all real numbers, okay? The range will vary from parabola to parabola, okay? So remember, to get range, we're going to go from our lowest point to our highest point, and we're going to write down y values, okay? So our low point, down here, your lowest point is going to be negative infinity, okay? Our high point is going to be the vertex, and that corresponds to y equals 9, okay? And we are going to include the 9 because there is no open circle there, okay? All right, so now we need to write down increasing, decreasing. So this is a blast from the past here, okay? So remember, increasing means you are rising from left to right. Decreasing means you're falling from left to right. Okay, so I'm just going to trace the parabola from left to right, okay, to see where I'm increasing and decreasing, and you have to write down the x values over which this is happening, okay? The great thing about parabolas is that everything changes at the vertex. On one side of the vertex or the axis of symmetry, you're doing one thing, and on, then on the other side, you're doing the opposite, okay? So, again, do not go by these arrows. Those are just there to tell you that the graph is continuing downward forever, okay? So I'm just going to trace the curve from left to right, okay? So I am rising, okay? So that's where I'm increasing, okay? And then after that,
after that, I am falling from left to right. Okay, so I'm decreasing. Okay, so hopefully you can see those colors. Anyway, if I go back to this left side of the axis of symmetry, this green part, if you can see the colors, that's where I'm decreasing, okay? And this portion of the parabola is over these x values, okay? So from negative infinity to negative three, okay? And remember, I don't care about the brackets or parentheses where increasing, decreasing constant is concerned, but I typically use parentheses, okay? On the other side of the axis of symmetry or the vertex, this pink part, that's where we're decreasing, okay? That corresponds to these x values, okay? So from negative three to positive infinity, okay? All right, the last part of this question is part C. And again, I started adding this to section 4.3. This is something out of 4.5, um, just so that when you get to section 4.5, it will you will be e able to easily pick it up, okay? Um, this is the question in part C. For what values of x is our parabola? Because remember, our parabola is negative x squared minus 6x. Where is it less than or equal to 0? Okay, so this may look like it's a little intimidating, but we've actually already done something like this earlier in the semester. Okay, so again, what you need to realize is that this guy is our f of x. Okay, so if you go back up here to the original equation, that's our f of x. Okay, so what this is really asking you, okay, is, remember, f of x is the same thing as y. Where are the y values less than or equal to zero? Okay, we did this, I think, in section 3.2, okay, where we had a function. It wasn't a parabola. We had a, a random function. And we wanted to know where the y values were either less than zero or greater than zero, okay? And if you remember to answer a question like this, it's all about do you look above the x-axis or below the x-axis, okay? In this case, you want y values that are less than zero. The y values are less than zero when you're below the x-axis, okay? So what you want here, okay, is you want the part of the parabola that is below the x-axis. Okay, so I'll put this in a different color, yellow, okay? I want these two parts, okay? Both of those yellow pieces are below the x-axis, so they have negative y values, okay? So that's the part, those are the parts of the parabola you're interested in. To write down the answer, you have to state the x values over which this happens, okay? So this first yellow piece, okay? This is happening from when x, okay, so this is coming from, this is covering because it's going to keep going, 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 going. So this is going to be negative infinity up until negative 6, okay? And then this second part over here, okay, that's below the x-axis, it starts here and then goes on. And remember, you're going to go down forever, so it's going to correspond to these x values, okay? So this is going to be from 0 to infinity. Okay, and then as far as the endpoints go, okay, this is less than or equal to, okay, so your y value can equal zero, okay, so you are going to want to include these two x intercepts because their y values are equal to zero, okay, so we're going to use brackets here, okay, and so that's how you would answer this question.